Hi, Caleb with Brown Nose here, back again with Paul from FM Products, and today we're going to be talking about uppers, not the narcotic kind. We're going to be talking <laughs> guns here, so Paul, why don't you take us through it? Hey, Caleb. Um, great to be here. I really appreciate you guys, and uh, this is a great... I'm really excited to be offering these uh, FM and Brown Nose partnering on these. I think it's a win for everybody. Um, about two and a half years ago, we started... Uh, we offered the um, Gen 2. And uh, we came to Brownells with the Zukov rifle, and eventually we started selling uppers. And the uppers, I think it's this one, was the 16-inch, was the first one we offered. Yeah. Um, and this was our upper, and it came, uh, basically could, anybody could combine it with the included pick rail adapter, and they could uh, you know, put their pick rail adapter on their own low receiver and have a bufferless uh, offering. And that was maybe two and a half years ago, two years ago. And little by little, we started expanding our offerings um, as the market grew. And and what we see here, um, the is this thirteen nine? That's thirteen nine. Yeah. That's my personal favorite. That's my personal favorite. Yeah. And everyone who's familiar with the Brownells YouTube channel knows thirteen nine is is Caleb's hot. We got to do a pin and weld. Imagine this: you came to the shop and we did a pin and weld together. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it'd be cool, wouldn't it be? Yeah, we need to. Do we that. should do that. Okay. All right. Um, 13.9, and we got to do, we got to create content where people, we can help people pin and weld. I think that'd be a great thing to do. That, yeah, we, we should. That's the future. 100% do that, yes. So then we, then we got the 13.9. Which um, don't come pin and welded. Do not. Comes okay. with an A2. Um, if, if, if Brownells has a preference, you know, the problem I think with pin and welding is you limit consumers on which suppressor they want, and, and there's so many people who want different suppressors. Yeah, or just different brakes in general. It, even if, you know, the, the thing we see with consumers a lot is even though they're probably never gonna change the muzzle device, not having the option yes. is, is gonna drive them crazy. Because Agreed. the whole reason they're doing all this is because right. of the options. 100%, 100%. Well, that's the beauty of this, is somebody could uh, could get their own muzzle device and, and do it the way they want. Uh, that's why I like the thought of this. Right. Um, so we got the 13.9 with an A2, again, integrated recoil system, doesn't need a buffer tube, any of that stuff, lighter, softer recoil, etc. Same with all this stuff. Um, we have the 12.5 and, um, and the 9 inch. Um, so basically they get increasingly spicier as you go down. Right. Listen, this is a pistol length gas, and I always tell people this, this will have the bolt on this gun will last about half as long as the bolt in this gun. It's yeah. just the nature of it. Right. It's 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 violent. There's a lot of oh, there's a lot more gases being thrown. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a much more it's it's got a, you know all those gases are going through a pistol length gas system. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not just for the that's for any. It's AR just any AR yeah. in general. Or you know. Any. But I like but I like to let people know like yeah. this is spicy man. It's spicy. Still fun. We one of the things we did we talked a little bit of how we got our gas down and some of the things we did in the design yep. and that really benefited us. Like I find that shooting this is very pleasant. It feels like a 12 and a half inch mid because we were able to get the gas port so small on it and still have it run reliably. So we, we call that a win. Oh yeah. And in all this and all this is going on with legislation, I honestly can't tell you which of these four is the most popular because they kind of sell equally at this point. Maybe at some point in the future that'll change. Maybe we'll go back to the days of 16 inch rifles. I don't know, but right now, right here, all of these are selling of kind of equal numbers for us. Um, I had anticipated it being more the 16, but it hasn't been that way. Yeah, I can, I think there's a future for 13.9, so. I'm just, in agreement, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. Um, so this was the Gen 2, and then this is the Mike 102. Um, so the Mike 102 is an AK variant that we developed um, we found that this operating system would work well with an AK variant. One of the challenges with an AK and doing it with a DI system is the mag has to sit up so high. And I, I believe my theory of why they haven't been as successful as they could have been over the last 15, 20 years where you see these kind of AK variants in an AR is that um, you have to get the mag up so high that you have to have a large orifice in the bottom of the upper here. And what that does is as the carrier is cycling, the carrier will want to drop down into that orifice and it will affect feeding. So we were fortunate in how we designed this where the carrier in our situation is supported, it's riding on a rail, so we don't have those same issues. So it worked, okay. we just knew it would work well and then we tested it and it did. So that's kind of the challenge we saw with an AR style taking AK mags. 
was the bolt wants to do this, and we were able to mitigate that, and sure enough, we were right. So we started this development. <laughs> we started this, this is an interesting story, I'll try and be brief. We were invited to uh, Kalash Bash, and um, there's an interesting story, you should ask those guys about it. Um, but uh, we, uh, they really didn't think, they, they had so many fallout, and they're like, hey, let's ask uh, Foxtrot Mike, they're working on an AK variant. And they said, hey, can you come to Clash Bash with us? We, we are going to be ready. Can you fill the slot? We said, sure. We went to the show, and uh, we were ready to do production testing, and we were stupid. We were like, hey, let's bring it to the show and let consumers test it for us. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no better live fire testing than, than two days of eight hours of live fire. Yeah. So, so the way they did it is it's four hours of live fire. Okay. And then a break, which is you and I both know at trade shows, that's not normal. It's right. usually like 30 minutes and then 10 minutes, and that was four hours straight. So we took the guns there and everybody was expecting us to get crucified because we were in AR manufacturing at an AK event, it was polar opposite. The guns, they were, we had lines out the door and we did all the production testing over two days. We did like 30,000 rounds. It was, it was an incredible amount of shooting. Lines out the door, two days, just live fire testing. We had to keep fans on the guns and we were using oven mitts because they were so hot. Man. And, um, and they, they made it. Um, and then we went to Red October and finished our testing, and then we launched the gun shortly after SHOT Show. Um, so, super fun gun, very simple. A guy, an AK guy will understand this because the simplicity of this will speak to him. Yeah. And that's what we found. We, we expected to get crucified. It was exactly the opposite. People really liked it. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, so that was a fun experience for us. Yeah, super fun. That's that's cool. Uh, so, let's talk about some of the things you have to do differently to make an AR upper compatible with AK mags. Solid, solid question. Boy, that's a good one. Um, there are some challenges. So you have to. Uh, what you don't want is you don't want the magazine to move around a lot. Um, let me put it to you this way: the better you can support the magazine, the better the feeding will be. And we were able to engineer um, the upper in such a way that as you rocked the magazine in, the upper would be used to support, in other words, push down on the magazine. And you get this, you don't really feel it when you're loading a mag because you get this mechanical advantage when right. you're rocking it in. It, but you get this nice tight lockup. And what that led to was some very excellent feeding. Um, in my opinion, this is probably one of the best feeding guns I've ever made. Um, because the, can I pick this up for yeah. the film? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can kind of see we really, it. really went to a lot of trouble to support that magazine and it really paid dividends in how it fed. Um, you gotta shoot this thing, it's super fun. I, I need one, I need you, so I need you to do like a super special 13.9 Caleb edition. Just, really? Just for me. And okay, then, then Pen and what, what suppressor are you gonna use, Caleb? I don't know yet. Exactly. Yeah. So you figure that out, and you get me a muzzle device. We'll take care of the rest. All right. Sounds good. I want I want you to be skeptical, but there were there a lot of the hurdles Caleb were overcome on this, and we knew it would play well with an AK. Of course, it's easier to develop a 5.56 AK because we're already developing a 5.56. Um, one of the key things is this great mag we found, which was from AC Unity. Great mag. Um, one of the key things that makes it challenging for a consumer is available mags, because right now I think a lot of the mags are 50 bucks, mm -hmm. but in a 5.56, but these are in the $15 range, oh, $14 range, readily available, high quality. So that was, this was kind of the key, was time to do it. Yeah. Is the question you're gonna ask is, are we gonna offer an X39? The answer is yes. Uh, that, was good. that was where I was headed with it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> You can't have all this into like building the AR-15 that takes AK mags and not do an X-39. You have to. There's no toys around yeah. it. So yeah, that's gonna obviously that's gonna be the consumer demand next. Is why even doing if I do X-39? So. We're actually in uh, we're actually in testing now. So Perfect. you know, in about 90 days we'll be having production samples getting out there into the world and getting in people's hands. Maybe. Brown else checking out some. Yeah, maybe so. I'm gonna get crazy with it personally. I'm gonna take like your X39 lower, and then I'm gonna modify my BRN 180 X39 upper. I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make the BRN 180 X39 upper take X39 AK mags. That's I'm gonna help you. I know right. a guy. Okay. I know a guy who can help you. That's gonna be like my next personal project. That's what I'm doing. It, 
I, I just came up with the, we didn't talk about this before. No, we I did not. This is a great idea. Yeah, I'm digging is, where this is going. I'm not even lying. This is a great idea. Happen. You're seeing it happen right, right now. here, right this now. Is the, the, the <laughs> I want consumers to be skeptical. <laughs> I want to see this happen. I know a guy. Maybe. Well, we, we did, we, uh, we did make sure that uh, we're going to do a future video about lowers. We wanted to make sure that all of our lowers are compatible with the BRN 180 sure. and our NRs. We want them to be able to play well together. Cool. Yeah. We like the BRN 180. I'm a fan. Yeah, and uh, kind of the last thing I want to touch on on these uppers really is um, charging handle. Obviously, it's not a rear charging handle. The charging handle's up front here. Uh, yep. If you watched the previous video, you, you saw the operating system, how that works. But the charging handle can be switched over. It can. It can. Um, we, we have a small, uh, one of the cool things I forgot to show you, I might be able to show you is, we saw in the previous video how the trolley was a round piece of steel. Right. And we engineered a shape. Can I point this bore? I don't want to point it too much at you. Oh, but you we can. engineered a shape here that's a hex. You see that? Yep. So that a round shape is living in a hex shape in there so that it's not, it's being supported on a very small bearing surface. That was an idea of okay. a young engineer named Neil Trout. He did a very good job of supporting us with this. Uh, Neil's a very talented guy. We used to work together at, uh, at Wilson Combat together. But you can see a little hex shape here, and that is a, it makes it slicker to pull upon. If that was a round hole and a round tube, you would, you would feel a lot more resistance. And now we also have egress for dust and dirt and things. Awesome. So that was a nice add to that. But yeah, it's non-reciprocating, it's ambidextrous. <laughs> You could, well, what I mean by ambidextrous is you can flip it over to either side. Right. By removing the set screw and sliding it over to the other side. Cool. Yeah, so that was kind of the last thing I wanted to touch on there. That is the upper receiver from Foxtrot Mike. Hey guys, we did this for you. Uh, we allow you guys to use your own mil spec lowers um, and we want you to have the lowest cost of entry by providing this product to get access to a bufferless system. We're really proud to be partnering with Brownells on this. There you have it. So Paul, thanks for coming out. Uh, join us in the next video. We're gonna be talking about lowers. Again, not the narcotic type. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thanks Brownells.